Hello, this is Father Rich. I'm back in the living room at Our Lady of Peace Rectory here before a YouTube uh, version of the next masterpiece, Johnny Cash's At Folsom Prison. And I have to admit, I didn't know uh, a lot about Johnny Cash's background, and this has really enlightened me a little bit and wanted, gotten me to want to look into um, his music a little bit more. But this is from uh, 1968. They talk about how it was really uh, a moment when Johnny Cash's uh, career was kind of uh, in the decline. Um, he had been wanting to do um, a, uh, an album in the prison and a concert. And finally, Columbia Pictures uh, signed off on it. Um, he, uh, he did it, let's see here, the, the, the uh, Carl Perkins and the Statler Brothers opened before him. And then he took the stage and did the, did the concert. Started out with Folsom Prison Blues, which um, is, is, you know, obviously the connection to the prison, why he wanted to do it at this prison, because he had written a famous song about that. But then he, he sang every song he knew about uh, prison, imprisonment and crime, um, and obviously connecting with the inmates in a very real way. There was a thousand inmates there for the concert. Um, they told him when he entered that he should enter at his own risk, that they couldn't guarantee his safety, but he still wanted to do it anyway. Highlights of the concert included um, Cocaine Blues, um, 25 Minutes to Go, which is a kind of a tongue-in-cheek song about uh, the anticipation of hanging. Uh, so kind of very, you know, real stuff for these guys. The sentimental ballad, Send a Picture of Mother, and then June Carter, who would soon become his wife, would then join him on, on stage for a stomping, steaming rendition of their famous duet, Jackson. Um, so it just, and it says, they got a great response from the inmates, uh, the, the album was an instant classic and success. It rejuvenated Cash's career and really um, had a big impact on him moving forward. Uh, so they tell the story about how he was born in 1932 in Arkansas um, and how he actually grew up working in the fields, the cotton fields, and picking cotton, singing songs. That's where he came to know his love of singing. Uh, started writing songs at a very early age, even as young as 12 years old. Um, and then he met, uh, he got married at a young age, met a few guys, Luther Perkins and Marshall Grant. They started kind of tinkering with playing guitar together in their garage at night. Eventually, one did the, took on the bass, one took a, um electric, I think, and then he stayed with the acoustic maybe or maybe do whatever, but they ended up finding the song that then would become kind of connected to Johnny Cash and the songs that he would sing. Um, they kind of talked about how he kind of was in the, he was kind of the, a, a rebel. He kind of had that reputation, anti-authority. Um, he kind of was in the country genre, but not really country. <laughs> so he kind of had a unique place that he, he held, and obviously his voice, that deep baritone, had an appeal and was something that uh, eventually helped him go big. Um, they talk about he, fin he first signed with Sun Records. He wanted to make a gospel record, but they wouldn't let him make a gospel record. That was what he was drawn towards. He had the spiritual upbringing. He wanted to bring that in. They wouldn't do it. But um, they, they said, you know, they wanted them to come back and bring some music that was not religiously focused. And so they eventually wrote the, the hit songs, Hey Porter, Cry, Cry, Cry. Um, and then things like Folsom Prison Blues, I Walk the Line, etc. Um, so he eventually moved to Columbia Records because he found that he wasn't doing as well as Jerry Lee Lewis, who was one of his kind of contemporaries. And then they would finally let him write uh, a gospel um, album, which he was excited to do. Um, but then as his career took off and the stress increased. He got involved in drugs, uh, mainly, uh, I think they said amphetamines and barbiturates. Um, and so that kind of, he became addicted to those things. That had a negative impact. He became less dependable. He was kind of all over the place. Um, so in the midst of that, um, he did write a, uh, a, an album about Native Americans. So he definitely was a uh, looked out for the uh, the marginalized or the underdog, so to speak. And that became, you know, helped him become beloved among his listeners. Um, but he did, I think it was called Bitter Tears about Native Americans. 
Blood, Sweat, and Tears, a tribute to the working man, um, as, war, as well as recording some big hits like Ring of Fire and Jackson. Um, but again, his, his personal life, his marriage was kind of coming, it was falling apart in the late 60s. The drug addiction, um, everything was kind of catching up to him. And it was in the midst of this um, that he actually went cave to, um, caving, spelunking. And they say that he, had, he actually had the intention of dying. He wanted to go into the cave, get lost, and die where nobody would find him because he was struggling so much. He had kind of a, um, a moment in the midst of that. What do they say? A God moment in which he felt the presence of God. Um, and he felt, he realized he had been running from him for many years. He suddenly understood that God still loved him, wanted him to live. He struggled to his feet, somehow made his way out of the, the prison, in, or excuse me, out of the cave. And kind of, that was a big part of re-energizing him to get his life together, to kick his drug habit, to uh, marry the woman who had been by his side this whole time and really um, was a rock for him, June Carter, etc etc um and then of course he did this uh, at Folsom prison 1967 he did an even bigger had a bigger follow a uh, successful follow up at San Quentin in 1969 so everything he got had a huge renewal in the late 60s uh to the point where they say in the 70s he actually his his career became bigger than even what he was before things had started to decline he had his own TV show the Johnny Cash show um, friends with Bob Dylan and Neil Young, um, kind of got us got well known as wearing all black. He said he wore that black, which I, I love the idea, even with the clerics. Um, he said that it was in order to, um, he wore it in, on behalf of the poor, the hungry, the prisoners, the recovering addicts and the overlooked and neglected. So again, um, from his earliest days, he had sung of the dignity of the ones who are held back, considering this as part of his duty as a Christian. So really his Christian faith at the heart of this, um, and he wanted to share that with others. He ended up getting connected with Billy Graham and appeared on two dozen of his televised crusades. So really got into that, did his own feature length movie on Jesus, the gospel road in 1973, which again, I had no idea about, um, talked about knowing he was the biggest sinner. So he wasn't judgmental, but still wanting others to know the, the hope that, uh, Christ brings. Uh, into our lives. So um, they kind of sum it up like this. Johnny Cash was a man of paradoxes, an anti-authoritarian rebel who might offer his middle finger to those in power, a preacher, Bible student, and gospel storyteller, a country singer who sold over 50 million records, many of them to folks who didn't normally listen to country music, a man who struggled with drugs, got clean, but had to fight them off again and again, and a man known to all his friends as a giving, caring, compassionate soul. He never thought of himself as anything other than a redeemed sinner. Because of that, he would gain a hearing from those who would never give the time of day to a saint. This is all Saints Day, actually, so it's really striking that, uh, again, the different people that can reach different individuals. And hopefully that reminds us that we all have individuals that only we can reach because of where we're at in life, whether we're, um, you know, uh, we're, we're, wherever we are in the spectrum that there's individuals only we can relate to because of our story and our experience and who we are. So hopefully at Folsom Prism uh, in, inspires us in that way. Johnny Cash, 1967. Our next um, masterpiece was 64, The Complete Stories by Flannery O'Connor in uh, 1971. Thanks for joining me. Have a great day and God bless.